May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I have to confess something to you. I don't have much of a green thumb. Rather the opposite, it tends to be a brown thumb. Plants entrusted to me do not have very good odds of survival. But when I started my job at Christ Church in Greenwich last summer, I decided that I needed something to kind of bring some life to my office. So I bought an orchid. Gorgeous, this deep kind of purpley, almost maroon color. It was beautiful, and I was amazed. It lasted, and the blooms thrived for about six months. I think it was a record for me. And then slowly they wilted, and I followed the instructions that it said that if you cut it back to, you know, real low, it would grow and bloom again. And I thought, okay, I'm going to try this. And nothing happened. And a few more months went by and nothing happened. Until finally, in about May, it seemed to be sprouting a little. And I thought, oh, okay. There's some possibility here. And it kept kind of growing. And I went on a trip for a couple of weeks at the end of June, beginning of July, for, to a conference and for some vacation. And I came back, and the blooms had exploded on this plant. About twice as many as had been there the year before. And I was amazed at the beauty that there was. It had taken some time, a lot of time. But it had grown back and been realized in a way far more spectacular than I could have hoped or imagined. This parable of the mustard seed can be perplexing. Really, the only thing I know about mustard seeds is what they look like when I take them out of my spice cabinet to use them. And when I looked to see what a mustard plant looked like, it's really not very impressive. These small, small seeds. And so it seems strange then when Jesus says to his disciples in response to their request, increase our faith, he says, well, you may only have a little teeny tiny bit of faith. So we have to look back at what has just happened. Just prior to this passage, Jesus has been describing the challenges and the costs of following him. The disciples have been told that they have to leave everything behind and take up their cross to follow Jesus. And in response, they say, whoa, increase our faith. We are not up to that. We can't accomplish that. And when in, placed within that context, all of a sudden this image of the teeny, tiny, unimpressive mustard seed becomes much more meaningful. Jesus says, you don't need anything more than this teeny, tiny seed of faith that has already been planted in you. 
God, through God's gracious love and abundance, has given us that faith. That faith that is enough to say to a mulberry tree, go and plant yourself in the ocean. That is enough to move mountains. But it can be really hard to believe that what might seem like a tiny amount of faith that we have is enough. Because too often we look at the world through a lens of scarcity rather than a lens of abundance. We look at the blessings we have been given and instead think about what we don't have. We look at what we have and think about how we might lose it. If instead we chose to look at our lives and our world through a lens of abundance, of thinking about just how much we do have, and how much we can do with that. Just how much can be accomplished with a teeny, tiny, mustard seed of faith. Well then, the task of following Jesus is not so intimidating. I love the line from, the, from Paul's letter to Timothy, God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and love. God calls us to do hard things. God calls us to forgive those who have wronged us, to have faith that justice can be realized in our world and to work for that justice. But God gives us a spirit of power and love and faith. Faith that that tiny seed planted within us, even if it takes a long time, will flourish so that we might accomplish and be more than we could ever imagine on our own. That is the abundant faith that God has in us. because we are all his beloved children. God says to us, you are enough. We are each enough, and we are each perfectly equipped to do the work that God has given us to do. All it takes is that teeny, tiny little bit of faith. Amen.
This is the table not of the church, but of God. Jesus has prepared it for us to meet him there. So come, you who have much faith, or you have, who have little, you who have been here often, or you who have not been in a long time. Jesus waits to meet us in this meal. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God, thanks and praise. It is right and truly the joy of our salvation, God of the universe, to give you thanks through Jesus Christ. You said, let there be light, and there was light. Your light shines on in our darkness. For you, the earth has brought forth life in all its forms. You have created us to hear your word, to do your will, and to be fulfilled in your love. It is right to thank you. You sent your Son to be for us the way we need to follow and the truth we need to know. You send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us, to guide us, to equip us, to warn and to revive your church. Blessed are you, most holy God, in your Son, Jesus, who washed his disciples' feet. I am among you, he said, as one who serves. And so, gathered around a table with friends, he took bread, and he blessed it, and he looked at them and said, this is my body. It is given for you. Whenever you eat it, do this to remember me. And then after supper, he took the cup of wine. And again, he gave you thanks. And he said to his friends, this is my blood, the new covenant with God. Whenever you drink it, do this to remember me. God of past and present, we remember, we, your people, remember your son. We thank you for his cross and rising again. We take courage from his ascension. We look for his coming and glory, and in him we give ourselves to you. Send your Holy Spirit that we who receive Christ's body may indeed be the body of Christ. And we who share this cup Draw strength from the one true vine. For you, the heavenly one, make all things new. You are the beginning and the end, the last and the first. In the intimacy of this sacrament, as heaven and earth become one, enable us to know you more deeply and resolve to love, honor, and serve you more faithfully in this world 
until your kingdom comes. Amen. And now we pray together as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is Christ's body broken for us. This is Christ's blood shed for us. In these gifts, God comes to us so that we might come to him. <laughs> 